Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder and today we're taking a look at a requested stock. And this one definitely has my interest peak. It is Ethan Allen Interiors, ticker ETD. Uh, currently trading for just shy of $30 at $29.26. The fair value I'm coming up with is $42.38. Our margin of safety would be $31.79. So it is within the buy range if we think that the other metrics look good. But a discount of cash flows is only coming up with $16.41. So let's get into this and see what's going on here and if it is worth taking a look at. Uh, yields look amazing. Earnings yield, 19.76%. Definitely undervalued. We'd be looking for something around a dollar and a half in earnings per share. And this last year, they came in at five twenty six. dollars This year, they're expected to come in at five $3.20. The cash flows... Uh, it does look like they were down a little bit this year, but still 11% is a great double-digit cash, cash flow number. The growth of that is not the best, though. It is shrinking. Uh, great start, but we would like to see some more growth from it. It's mostly shrinking due to how high it was back in 2020. Uh, it took a huge hit going into 2021 and has been on the way back up since. If they can get back to that 17.2 uh, cash flow yield, they're currently at 11.7. Uh, it would be very good. So there is definitely potential for that to be headed back up. Dividend yield, 6.5% with a payout ratio of less than 24% is very good. Uh, definitely shows that this stock is very undervalued. A lot more room to grow this dividend, and they have been growing it like crazy. They didn't start paying until 2021, and uh, they're paying out special dividends, and uh, growing it rather quickly. Their returns look pretty good. ROE, just about 22.5. ROI, 12.37. ROA, 14%. So they can get a, so they can fetch a decent return on the money that they're investing into the business. Debt to equity, finally, we have one that looks good, less than one, and they are paying down their liabilities while growing their assets. It's exactly what we want to see. This is going to continue going down into the future. Margins, great gross margin, 60, almost 61% up from what it has been on average over our time frame. Net margins, 13.37 up from the 11.6 we've typically seen. Uh, margins are growing and they're looking pretty good. So here we have some of the growth here. Biggest issue is the revenue. Uh, so compound over the last two years, we have some growth, about 7.5% every year, but it seems to be they shrank about 3% over the last year. Analysts are projecting they're going to shrink about 3% going forward because uh, this is a, a compound annual growth rate for the two-year projection. So we're plugging in negative 3% for the revenue. Now, we will follow with earnings and see what they're saying about it, uh, if they're going to come back, but that is something to keep an eye on here. If they come in with worse than negative 3%, we might have an issue. Earnings per share had some great growth over the last two years. And again, we're seeing some negative growth. Um, cash flow, we've already touched on. The share count, very slow buybacks, uh, not a whole lot. So we're just going to say 0.2 for the projection here, lower than what they have done in the last two years. <clears throat> Assets, they're growing pretty well, 3.5%, uh, 4.5%. So we're going to put 3% for the asset growth. Liabilities, they're shrinking them 9% over the last two years, 12 in the last one. So they have picked it up a bit. But we're just going to say 10 in between those two numbers. Go with something a little bit safer. Dividend, uh, we're going to just assume 5% growth in the dividend. This is because they started paying their dividend in 2021, the very last quarter. And uh, since then, they've been paying out for a year with a special dividend on top of that. So it does look exorbitant, but it's more in the realm of 5 to 10%. And then margin growth, they are growing their margins pretty well. So we're going to say 5% growth year over year. And this is what those numbers will give us. So if you buy at the current price, the intrinsic value we're coming up with is $42. It'd move up to almost $44 over the course of the next three years. Because with all these assumptions, the stock is growing by 1% uh, 
every single year. So it's definitely not looking like a good long-term play. It's looking like maybe a value turnaround play, uh, definitely with that high dividend, potentially just a value dividend play. Because if you can buy in at these prices or even lower, it's been as low as 21 and a half, uh, that dividend does look like it's pretty safe. And you'll have a decent yield going into the future, especially at the rate that they've been growing it. And then in five years, we'd be looking at the share price getting up to $45 in intrinsic value. So you're again having market beating returns. Uh, at that case, it's only 5%. Over the next three years, you have a much greater uh, market beating return because you're starting at such a low point. It's so undervalued right now. And then all of our valuation metrics here, it looks very good. We talked about the earnings per share. It's coming in with about double what we'd want to see at this share price. The cash flows, we'd want $37 million. And this last year, they came in at $87 million. So crushing that more than double. And then the balance sheet, uh, we'd want net assets of just about $250 million. And even if we go their tangible net assets minus their liabilities, we're essentially at that. So it is looking very good on a value front. Exactly the type of thing that we're looking for. Financials, like we said, we want to take a look at the earnings when they come out and see what's going on because Analysts are expecting some declines going forward, and things are starting to level out a bit. The balance sheet, the great, amazing trend, great tangible assets, uh, everything looks really good here. Uh, they're very, very good on the balance sheet front. Cash flows. Again, we're looking for them to get back up to that 17% cash flow yield or something within that range, but the 11 that they're currently at is fine. And in fact, these will probably continue going up into the future. Uh, we did just use the 11% as a estimate going forward. Dividends, you can just see how crazy their dividend growth has been. It is flattening out, of course, but uh, in 2024, at the rate that they've done it, it'd be almost $2 at that point, which when you're getting it, at the current share price, that's a very good yield. And then the prices of everything. So we're not seeing any like super crazy growth. We're seeing the dividend was not bringing a whole lot. And now it's bringing the most value to the stock with that six and a half percent yield. It's just absurd um, how high that yield is, especially for a company where there's not any glaring red flags aside from the declining revenue. So we need to dig deeper into that, especially when the earnings come out. And then earnings are the lowest factor here. Uh, they have been growing them historically. Bit of a dip right now. It could just be a lull in the market. If we're talking the furniture space, we've taken a look at BSET and at LEG, and both of them are in a big lull. And uh, it doesn't look like the furniture market's doing the best right now, which could pose a time to buy for a solid company such as this. Uh, the share price right here, mostly in line with the earnings, it seems, and then everything else just way up above. Cash flows looking very good and the balance sheet looking very good. So we definitely would want to see this $30 more in the realm of $40 for some balance here. And uh, it's definitely a company that I am going to be keeping an eye on because I, I like what they're doing with the dividend and... For me, uh, that would probably be the most important thing for this company. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like if you enjoyed the video. Comment what other stocks we should take a look at. And subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.